those wicked individuals, the homosexual and so forth, do you think that they are more sinners than they? Sin is sin, friend. It's sin. That's why we should never, ever judge. Because the Bible tells me that all have sinned. Therefore, judgment should only belong to who, friends? To God. There's a quote that says that there is so much good in the worst of us and so much evil in the best of us that it behooves none of us to think that we are better than the rest of us. We should never ever do it, friends. A lot of times when sermons are presented, the summer will start surmising evil. We start looking around the church and we start analyzing the facial expressions and the body movement and somehow we are trying to, 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 to decipher or discern which one is offending. God didn't give you that responsibility. God didn't give you that call. We need to take a page out of the disciples' book. When the word of God is presented, we should all cry out like the disciples, Lord! Is it a... Let's turn that flashlight on the inside. We are told in Jeremiah chapter 9, 17 and verse 9, the heart is deceitful above what, friends? All things. Notice now, and also what? Desperately wicked. And the question is asked, who can know it? Not you and I. Oh, no. We can discern. We can fathom. We can somehow, you know, um, find out the contents of a man's heart. We can't do that. That is not a job or not a, a, a power that God has given us. We are told in First Samuel 16 and verse 7, the Bible says, For the Lord was see it not as man see it. For man look it on what? The outward appearance, but the Lord look it on the heart. We can see the heart, therefore we should never ever judge. We also are told in 1 Corinthians 4, 3 to 5, the Bible says, that therefore judge nothing before time until the Lord comes. Judgment, friends, is reserved only for God. Rather, what we should be doing, friends, is what the disciples did, that whenever the word of God is presented, we should always internalize, point the flashlight this way, and we should ask the Lord the question, Lord, Lord, is it a, is it a, now, we briefly answer what they did not do. Now, we want to look at, friends, what did they do? What did they do? They did some self-examination. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5, Paul admonishes every single man when the word of God is presented, we should start doing some self-examination. You know, Charles Spurgeon said that as we consider this word, examination, and as we look at a few examples too, I know we understand this word, but let us put it in a, a, a better context as far as to understand this presentation. So Charles Persians said that examination or examine is a scholastic idea. You see, when we go to school and we spend X amount of um, uh, um, months or weeks studying a subject, eventually at the end of the semester, you are given what? a test. You are given an examination. You have to take an exam and the teacher or the professor wants to know, did you get it? Did you understand all that I've been presenting? So we see, friend, examination is a scholastic idea. Examine yourself. Spurgeon also said that it is a military idea. Examination. Uh, you see, when you go to boot camp or you're getting into the army, friends, you are put through a lot of tests. They want to know what type of man you are. They want to know if you can cut it. Uh, they want to make sure that you understand the rules of engagement. They want to understand that you know all the protocol that the army has. So you are brought through many examinations. Examine yourself. Uh, you see, examination is also a legal idea. 
You see, whenever you go to court, you notice that the lawyer always cross-examine the witness. Likewise, friends, we need to cross-examine our hearts. We need to examine ourselves, ask the question backward and forward, and try to trip ourselves up so we can truly know our hearts. Examine ourselves. When the Word of God is presented, it is not for us to look around and to see who is at fault or who you think is at fault, but we should start doing some self-examination. You know, when we go to buy a car, we always examine that car. Uh, we make sure that we we'll open the, the hood and we look to make sure everything seems right. And we look under the car to make sure that there's no oil leak. And we went ahead and we checked the tires to make sure the tires are good. And, and we turn on the AC and right, we check everything to make sure all is in order. Examination. We are told in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 31, uh, Then say Jesus unto them. Now, we see that after Jesus revealed to them, that one of the twelve will, de- will betray him, they ask the question, right? Is it I? Then we're going to pick up now at verse 31. The Bible says, Then say Jesus unto them, All he shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after much self-examination, after the disciples examined themselves, after Peter examined himself, he was of a, uh, a, a conclusion that all is well with my soul. I've examined my heart. I've examined myself. So when Jesus said to Peter that this night all shall be offended of me, Peter now responded in saying, Peter answered and said unto him, unto Jesus, Though all men shall offend shall be offended because of thee, yet I will never be offended. He examined himself, so he was confident that I would never ever deny my Lord or betray my Lord and my Savior. Then Jesus now responded now to Peter again and said this. Jesus now said unto him, Verily I said unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter can't accept the words of God. Can't accept the words of Jesus. You see, he has done some examination. And I've come to the conclusion that it is well with my soul. Maybe somebody will deny you, but it's not me. So Peter now responded in saying unto him, Though I shall die, that's so far I'm willing to go for you, my Lord and my Savior. Yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. You know, friends, there is one thing to examine yourself. But there is another thing where proof is concerned. You know the old saying that says the proof is in the pudding. So examination is one. But now the Bible also says, as we look at verse 5 of 2 Corinthians chapter 13, examine yourself, and now we move on to say, prove your own self. So examination is not enough. You now have to prove yourself. You see, after you do the examination on the car, you're not just going to buy the car just like that. I mean, it might look good, but you can't tell how it drives. You have to take it off for a test drive, Amen. You're not just going to buy it just like that. You take a test drive. You want to make sure because you don't know if the brake is working. You need to take it a test drive to see if the brake's going to work. You want to know how it feels at certain speed. Does it vibrate? When I try to stop, does it really stop? Is the alignment well? Are the wheels balanced? And all this you will find out when you go to do your test drive because you're going to approve that vehicle. So Peter was put to the test. 